East Palestine, Ohio. The town is under a state of emergency after 50 train cars derailed, causing a massive fire a half mile long, which lit up the night sky and burned for hours. Five of those cars carrying vinyl chloride. It's used to make plastic. It's toxic and extremely flammable. The smell made her eyes water, and she also believes it could be why her chickens are now dead. Hey everybody, it's Krista Rose from KDKA. We're in East Palestine, Ohio. This is just over the Pennsylvania, Ohio border. A massive train derailment occurred overnight. That ain't no fucking storm cloud. That's fucking shit from East Palestine. They're fucking controlled bird. Look at it. This is over Darlington. You didn't have to do this. You did it because of time and money. I live 25 miles from East Palestine, Ohio, in Volant, Pennsylvania. I'm here to provide a certain perspective from chemistry, which I haven't heard anywhere else. I graduated from Penn State University as a synthetic organic chemist. Although I'm a flower farmer now, I still find myself in practice, in my work. It's not something that leaves you, so I read a lot of papers and keep up with current events. So when I saw that black cloud rising on the news, of course, I wanted to know what was going on. What I discovered was very much unexpected. In fact, horrific. We're gonna take a look at what happened here from an educated perspective. We'll need the material safety data sheet for vinyl chloride, an understanding of what reactions to avoid in case we have to fight fires, what to do in an accidental release, and in case of an emergency discharge, what is the official procedure? And was it followed? And lastly, was this the only option? The first step to understanding what happened is to take a look at the principal material involved. And in this case, it's vinyl chloride. So I would want to see the material safety data sheet for this compound. The first one that comes up is from a company called Airgas, and it's probably the one everyone is looking at. Now, I didn't think Airgas was the company that manufactured the vinyl chloride that was on the train. And for the video, I wanted to show the correct document. The manufacturer wasn't mentioned in any of the news articles, but they did say that the train was going from Madison, Illinois to Conway, Pennsylvania. I looked up chemical companies in the Madison area, thinking that the vinyl chloride had originated there. There are a number of chemical companies in Madison, Illinois, but one of the names stood out to me, and that was Sigma Aldrich. They have a plant in Madison, and they also manufacture vinyl chloride. 
So I'm assuming that Sigma Aldrich is the company that manufactured the vinyl chloride that was on the train. The MSDS comes straight to the top upon searching for it. And one of the things I noticed immediately was the revision date, February 7th of 2023. Now, that was the day after the controlled burn in East Palestine, and I would prefer to see version 8.5 of this document, which was in effect up until the day of the detonation. But this is the only version we can find online, so I guess we'll take a look at this one. Search for Sigma Aldrich Vinyl Chloride MSDS. This is it. It's a flammable gas, in this case, a pressurized liquid, and it's carcinogenic. You should wear all the protection, and if exposed or even concerned, get medical attention. If we have a leaking gas fire, do not extinguish unless it can be stopped safely. Contact could cause cold burns and frostbite. We'll come back to that. If we have a fire, we can put it out in any of the standard ways. But we'll want to take a look at some of these special hazards. If we have a burning container, knock down gases and mists with a water spray. But don't let it enter the water system. It mutates bacteria and causes cancer. Symptoms of exposure. It's toxic to fish, kills bacteria, and persistent in the environment. When subjected to incomplete burning, vinyl chloride produces carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, hydrogen chloride gas, phosgene, and a toxic cocktail of compounds, including dioxins. So that's what was on the train. The government procedure for handling transportation-related incidents involving hazardous materials is found here in the 2020 Emergency Response Guidebook, published by the Department of Transportation. We see in the index that vinyl chloride is classed with similar compounds, and to follow procedure 116P. At the top of the page, those substances designated with the P may polymerize explosively when heated or involved in a fire. Cylinders exposed to fire may vent and release flammable gas through pressure relief devices, as we have seen. Containers may explode when heated, causing the cylinders to rocket. That's what they're worried about. Contact with gas or liquefied gas may cause burns, severe injury, and or frostbite. Fire may produce irritating and or toxic gases. We'll revisit that. If tank, rail car, or tank truck is involved in a fire, isolate for 1,600 meters, one mile. That's where that came from. In capital letters and bold on the second page, do not extinguish a leaking gas fire unless leak can be stopped. We saw that also in the MSDS. In the case of a large fire, use water spray or fog, also from the MSDS. If it can be done safely, move undamaged containers away from the area around the fire, which they did. If we have a tank fire, cool containers with flooding quantities of water until well after fire is out. Do not direct water at source of leak or safety devices. Icing may occur. And for a massive fire, use unmanned master stream devices or monitor nozzles. If this is impossible, withdraw from the area and let fire burn. 
so that's the official procedure. And since we're talking about a fire, let's take a look back at those combustion products. Carbon monoxide is acutely toxic in relatively low concentrations. Hydrogen chloride gas reacts with water in the atmosphere, producing hydrochloric acid rain. Phosgene killed 85,000 people in World War I as one of the first chemical weapons. And lastly, a chlorinated hydrocarbon disaster, the dioxins, cancer-causing pollutants that accumulate in all living things. I did not see in this procedure an option to detonate it, which would have been counterintuitive given the P designation indicating explosive polymerization. Yet somehow we are left with two options, let it burn and perhaps offload some of it, or blow it up, the rationale being it was going to blow up on its own. I want to take a look at this possibility using an area that overlaps between chemistry and physics called thermodynamics. Perhaps that can help us figure it out. My first question is, will the steel melt? Not at this temperature. Is the overall temperature increasing? Crews had put out most of the surrounding fires and were left with a couple of burning cars. Will they explode? That's what we're after. We've heard talk about spontaneous polymerization, but it didn't happen during the impact. What about fuel-air mixtures? Well, not at this point. Could the tankers explode? These were immersed in fire and they didn't. Is there anything else going on here? Perhaps not apparent from the outside, but that any good chemist would be able to tell you. The tank inside is cooling. The expansion of the gas pulls the temperature down. Way down. This is Joule expansion, and the reason for these mysterious warnings about cold burns and frostbite. eventually reach thermodynamic equilibrium, getting neither hotter nor cooler. And by the third day, it had. The vinyl chloride was so cold, there was no chance of explosive polymerization. I'm not even sure a bomb could have initiated it. In fact, it didn't. It wasn't going to blow up. <laughs>